Friends, let us continue with the fifth lecture on module 2. where we are going to open upon reliability methods so this lecture will continue for further couple of lectures therefore we say reliability methods one we already said in the last lecture that the major part of performance assurance is covered at the design stage itself so the major part of performance assurance which is required from a given system in terms of its functional requirement is generally done at the design stage itself and we all agree and understand that the one which is covered in the design stage is what we call as level 1 reliability. However, in the design there are varieties of uncertainties which is present. Let us see them. Let us talk about uncertainties in the design in general, then we will talk about uncertainties in the design applicable to offshore structures in particular. Okay. So, this has got references from let us say grant 2004. Halder and Mahadev in 2000, and 1995. These researchers very clearly say that reliability analysis imply estimation of limit state probabilities. So, reliability analysis is actually focused to estimate the limit state probabilities of a structure for its under adverse under adverse combination of loads for its intended period period of use. Therefore, safety is to actually quantify the satisfactory coverage of uncertainties in the design stage. uncertainty in the design stage itself. So, that we can eliminate them, control them, minimize them at the budding stage itself. So, therefore, safety is related to an existing process. which has direct consequences to failure. As clearly defined and stated in IS 1656 2000 Julian 1957. So, we agree that in the design stage reliability can be addressed to take care of the uncertainties present in the system, while it is a design method. So, reliability can be seen indirectly as a design method, but used actually to assess the performance of a structure okay? that is very important. Though reliability is a design method, 
because we are using it at the design stage, but generally used to assess the performance of the truck. I should say performance of the system for its functional use. Now, by doing so or by limiting it only to assessment, there is a great advantage. What is the advantage? The major advantage is it becomes deterministic. So, safety assessment methods give therefore, a closed form solution. They can be applied to existing structural system to assess their performance. They can be easily applied to the existing structural system to assess their performance. Now, let us look at reliability now in comparison to safety. On the other hand, if you look at reliability, it is actually a probability of realization of unsafeness. That is what researchers define reliability very critically, Benjamin and Cornell. in 1970. Reliability has converse consequence of failure. Whereas, safety has direct implication of failure. It is a probabilistic approach it can be also used as one of the design methods as clearly people said in the literature Ang and Tang 1975A. 1975B, Lancaster 2000, however accuracy of the results of reliability approach essentially depends on the data based on which the results are arrived. Therefore, relativity methods have a probability of giving erroneous results. If the data is inaccurate. Therefore, to have a proper assessment or results of reliability methods or analysis, your data should be dependable and reliable. Most importantly, reliability is assessed even before the failure is foreseen, that is very, very important.
Okay. Therefore, reliability methods can be also called preventive forecast of failure. as said by Chandrasekharan and Saha 2011. Now, let us extend the discussion from safety to reliability to risk. Risk analysis is actually an extension of reliability analysis. In this extension, what do you actually do? You include the consequences of failure also. Therefore, most important aspect of reliability analysis is to consider the uncertainties which make the structure vulnerable to failure for a predefined limit state. So, these are the keywords. So, the most important feature of reliability analysis should be address uncertainties, I mean in fact all uncertainties predict forecast probability of failure for a predefined limit state that is very very important. You have got to predefine what is that limit state function or limit state condition you are going to apply to assess the reliability. Okay? These are the keywords meaning, meaning reliability approach or reliability analysis will focus on. Now, the question comes we are talking about probabilistic estimate of failure or converse of failure. So, whenever you have associated property of probability to the theory you always have a approximation. Therefore, a reliability engineer or any scientist will have a question in mind what would be the accuracy of this analysis. So, one can say accuracy of reliability analysis actually depends on the accuracy with which the uncertainties are addressed. So, let us try to apply this discussion more practically. So, one can say practically it is not possible to address or to account for all uncertainties. If you know them certainly then the uncertainty will not exist. Okay? So, all of them cannot be addressed. But for sure important ones must be addressed at least okay, at least important ones must be accounted for in the analysis. So, that is the first point. The second point could be which is challenging the accuracy is one has to focus on the methods of modeling and analysis. Because accuracy of reliability analysis essentially depends on what method of modeling you are following. And of course, this is also not an easy task. 
okay, but this can be done anyway. Even in this case also, you know that some amount of uncertainty will exist in modeling okay, that anyway will be there. So, one can make a statement it is not possible to obtain exact probability of failure. of a structural system or an event except for simple ones you can do. Okay. This statement is very much valid. We already said there are basic two types of uncertainties aleatory and epistemic this can be further classified which are dominant in reliability analysis. So, uncertainties that are dominant in reliability analysis are following 1 randomness that is uncertainty which are arise from randomness and variabilities in environmental loads let us say q action. The second could be statistical uncertainty which arise due to estimation of parameters describing the statistical models. The parameters describing the statistical models, what could be those parameters? It can be mean can be standard deviation etc coefficient of kurtosis etc okay the third could be modeling uncertainty which arise due to imperfection of mathematical modeling because the physical phenomena is very complex it may not be possible to account for all those complexities while you convert them into a numerical model or an analytical model. So, there can be uncertainties arising from modeling statistical parameter estimates or inherently present randomness and variabilities in the loads. Now, one can easily see here the error in relativity estimates even in the design stage itself can occur from these three types of sources out of which depending upon the data or depending upon the ensemble size to some extent this can be controlled to some extent to some extent with due to knowledge and mathematical modeling this can be addressed. However, the presence of the randomness and variability in the loads cannot be addressed at all in full. Unfortunately, if you look at the hierarchy or the order of influence in the accuracy of analysis with respect to these three uncertainty types, this will be dominating compared to these two. Of course, the order will be first, second and third. It means the contribution arising from model uncertainties in the overall error in the reliability analysis will be the least compared to 
that arise from randomness and variabilities in the loads. So, the one which we do not have control is unfortunately prompting up to the maximum contribution in the error of reliability analysis. Therefore, reliability analysis can never give you a very accurate statement. Therefore, we can say it is not actually possible to obtain exact probability of failure of a system or an event except that which are very very simple ones. Okay? Now, as said by Miller 1981, as said by Miller, the uncertainty arising from irreducible and those arising from these three. For example, I will call this as one, the uncertainties arising from 1 or irreducible. Whereas, those arising from 2 and 3 can be reduced. Okay? Now, how to do this? How to handle this? It all depends upon how accurately you form the limit state function. How accurately you form this function in the analytical model. So, mathematically the whole complexity will amount to choosing, forming, proposing a limit state function which will account for the uncertainties or unknownness in the whole analysis. Okay? The second of course, complexity will arise when you start integrating the probability density function within the domain of interest which is also complex. So, you have got now two approximations or two seriousness. So, I could say two hurdles in reliability analysis. The first one arising from the limit state surface. How accurately are you going to mathematically model this? How are you going to form this function, etcetera? The second is integrating the probability density function within the domain of interest. Therefore, these hurdles result in various approximations which are called reliability methods. Earlier we saw reliability levels. Okay? Now, we are going to see reliability methods. Therefore, different degree of simplifications are done lead to different reliability methods. Okay? Apart from these uncertainties, there are others for which simplification of the problem is definitely required on hand. Let us say what are they? Apart from these uncertainties, we have further uncertainties. for which simplification of the problem on hand is mandatory. The foremost in the queue is a nonlinear analysis. Okay? Is one domain which can result in lot of uncertainties. So, this should be equally replaced by linear analysis. So, replace or replaced by equivalent linear analysis. 
So, there is an approximation here. However, we already know even when you do this accurately, still the reliability analysis will lead only approximate solutions. We already know that. Okay? Therefore, one can slightly compromise here in estimating the reliability results by using preliminarily the equivalent linear analysis in place of detailed nonlinear analysis. Okay? The second could be continuum may be represented by discrete model. with limited degrees of freedom. Okay. So, collection of more data or sample helps in providing a better statistical parameter. So, the second part of this can be addressed by improving your ensemble size. Okay. But the problems related to the modeling in terms of non-linear capturing the non-linearity in the material as well as in the load behavior. Discretizing the model in terms of limited degrees of freedom whereas, in originality and reality the model is behaving as a continuum model etcetera. These are all other further factors which may lead to further complication or uncertainties in the reliability analysis. Therefore, to avoid these confusions one generally refines the reliability model further to account for these uncertainties also in the analysis. In addition to this, you can also have more rigorous analysis with sophisticated models of structures to account for the nonlinearities or uncertainties arising from these sources in detail. Therefore, one can make a statement here a unified approach for treating statistical and model uncertainties in the reliability analysis. Is it possible? So, the question comes in mind is do we have any approach which addresses both statistical and model uncertainties. In the reliability analysis, the answer is yes this is what we call Bayesian approach this is used to update the model parameters and develop what is called likelihood functions okay we'll talk about this later when we move on to the methods of reliability so it actually leads with development of likelihood functions with the help of these functions the posterior parameters or the models can be obtained by from the prior ones. Okay, like a follow up chain. So, this method or this approach is considered to be having less uncertainty. The reason is very simple all the properties are derived from the information available to the system in the prior basis. Okay, they have less uncertainty and they can be used for development of more data and observations. Okay. We already said the reliability methods use probabilistic approach. So, different probabilistic models
which are commonly used in reliability analysis could be the following. One, uniform distribution, two, extreme value distribution, three, log normal distribution, and four Poisson distribution. The probability function of these distributions and the parameters associated with these functions are available in the standard literature for each type of distribution. I would request the viewers and the listeners to kindly go through these distributions from any standard references available in the NPTEL website of this course try to understand and really do some uh, insight looking at the parameters associated with the PDF probability distribution function, distribution function of these distributions and try to understand them with their limitations available in their application formats. Okay. They are all useful to describe the distribution of different uncertain parameters which are actually handled in reliability analysis. Now, therefore, friends, procedures for performing reliability analysis vary with the selection of the above models. Whatever probabilistic model you select or choose, depending upon that, performing reliability analysis will vary. When material and other uncertainties are introduced, procedure for the analysis may further vary. Okay, that is what the statements are. As referred by Rackets and Feisler, It is clearly said that as you keep on adding more and more details about the R and Q that is the material resistance or the structural resistance and the load effects Q, the complexity in the analysis levels will be keep on increasing. For example, a stochastic finite element analysis is used for random loading while material and other uncertainties may be included by simple procedures in a very appropriate or approximate manner. So, you do not have to look into very sophisticated models to account for simple inclusions in the reliability analysis. So, one has to carefully choose the probabilistic model in such a manner that what uncertainty or what level of uncertainty you are going to address, okay? because that will decide about the reliability methods or reliability analysis levels. Okay? In fact, various levels of approximations are often used to simplify the reliability analysis procedure and make it consistent with the desired accuracy. Okay? Now, let us see what are uncertainties related to the design stage in offshore structures. Uncertainties in system design of offshore structures to be very particular. Okay, let us do let us try to find the result. Uncertainties arise from various sources. If you look at the fabrication process of the platform, let us say fabrication process of the platform, if that is considered as a case of study, uncertainties can arise from the following sources, non-availability of the requisite material. or non equivalent substitution of 
the recommended material because this is a very common problem in case of fabrication of structures. Why? Because it, it is going to now govern the time of construction or the period of construction and of course, it will also govern the sequence of construction that is very important. Okay. Since these two factors are very dominant in offshore structural design and the design stage itself or construction stage itself let us say. So, they will govern and they will also introduce uncertainties. So, if you attempt to substitute an equivalent material which will cause a minor uncertainty of course, this can be handled in the design stage itself as said by Shartel Two thousand five, Srinivasan and Kiran, nineteen fourteen, A B, etc. The next could be in case of detailing in design. Errors can also occur while detailing. Okay. Of reinforcement, etc. Okay. Of course, this can be noticed and corrected during the design reviews because designs are reviewed thoroughly therefore, the during the review meetings this can be corrected. Fabrication errors can also come up they can be captured during inspection and can be rectified subsequently. But one can say these uncertainties are quite complex Why? you want to estimate their consequence in terms of fatigue life. That is to estimate the fatigue analysis, people use the stress concentration factor. The stress concentration factor depends on errors arising from fabrication, improper replacement, detailing, etcetera. This is a very interesting case study which is dealing with the stress concentration factor of K joints and T joints, which I will discuss in detail when I talk about reliability application to offshore structures. So, there you will clearly understand what are those anomalies which can arise when you are estimating a stress concentration factor especially of out plane loading systems which we did experimentally in our institute. Therefore, people use empirical rules for multiplanar joints which do not represent the true behavior because these empirical rules account for some uncertainties however, they introduce certain errors in the whole analysis because they do not represent the real behavior of the joint under the real loading state. The next uncertainty can arise from top side installation top side installation can have uncertainty while in case of lifting operation if the design does not match the lifting arrangement proposed by proposed by the lifting contractor 
or the constructor, it may have lot of errors and uncertainties arising from during the construction and the lifting stage itself. Inadequate detailing will lead to transfer of lifting loads to cause imbalance in the structural design. These aspects can be rigorously checked during the design review process of course. Uncertainties may also arise during installation. of the platform. It may be due to rough weather, which of course increases the loads during installation that is one reason. In particular, there are more seriousness in case of commissioning large compliant offshore platforms. It is rather interesting to note that the damaged compartment scenario is study the design stage which accounts for uncertainty that arise during sinking of the jacket while launching. Okay. There are some methods by which these kind of uncertainties are foreseen and they are taken care of the design stage or at least in the review process. Therefore, friends uncertainties also arise during grouting of shear keys in particular in case of jacket structures. Alternatively such issues can be taken care of in the design by admitting a reduced factor of safety because remedial action may not be possible for any reason further in such mistakes. Okay. So, the correction could arise from the correction could arise from using reduced factor of safety in the design okay, as suggested by Srinivasan and Subrata. So, friends in this lecture we understood that reliability methods, uncertainties presence in the reliability methods, decide what kind of analysis you are planning to do, probability distribution models will decide what is the extent of coverage of uncertainty in your analysis, uncertainties arise from different stages, design stage, construction, fabrication, erection transporting, welding, even grouting etcetera. Can all the uncertainties arising from this stage can be taken care of? What are approximate methods which can account for these uncertainties? For example, one such is reduced factor of safety in the design etcetera. So, people in the design stage have suggested various alternatives. One could be stress concentration factor to account for the fatigue analysis, other could be factor of safety in the design for different load combinations. Other could be a design check which accounts for the damaged compartment failure in case of sinking of the jacket while it is being transporting or launching or after launching it may happen. So, all these procedures address rigorously the probable failure which could happen which could be foreseen in the design stage or review stage itself. So, reliability is done inherently in offshore structural design as a part of checking process itself in the preliminary stage of design itself. It means reliability or safety assessment in offshore structures is inherently inbuilt in the design mechanism itself. So, that all such failures mostly arising from construction, fabrication, erection etcetera are foreseen in advance and appropriate measures are taken care of or accounted for in the design by some approximate rules and methods as suggested by international courts and various researchers. So, in the further lectures we will talk about different models of reliability, methods of reliability in detail. Thank you very much.